What is up everybody? I am Joe Tobias, a Washington State elopement photographer based in Seattle. And, uh, uh, you know, don't shoot weddings every day. So I was out with my daughter. Uh, we were just hanging out in Seattle trying to come up with something to do. And so we thought we would go and shoot some Lomo Lomochrome Purple, which is a film I never used before, so I picked it up a little bit of glazers and headed down to the Seattle waterfront to make some images of it. Now, this is a film that, I, you know, like I said, I never used it before, and so I thought it would just be a really fun one to to go try to like make some make some you know make some memories, but also try to make some photos that just felt different and stuff. And right off the bat, the thing that this film is most known for is that it shifts um, colors, and so. The way that they do this is that they let the film kind of age in a particular way, and so that's what allows for all the color shifts, and then you can just develop it normally. I was finally shooting on my uh, Canon Elan 7E, which allowed me to be very precise in kind of the way that I was working it, which is really helpful just because it is such a varying film and can do a lot of different things. So I wanted something that was more precise and accurate while I was using it. That's it, it's most known for changing the colors of the greens. And of course I went to a place that was all blue. So uh, yeah, the, the blue does shift a little bit, kind of moves from tr true blue into a little bit more of kind of a tealy blue, but it doesn't have the complete color shift that other ones do. Uh, that said, it still was really pretty to be out on the waterfront and making these kind of photos down there just because it always allows for that little bit of unknown, which is part of the reason that we shoot film, right? I mean, there definitely are, like, there are times that you want your film to look exactly like what you know, but it also is really cool to look different. Um, this is one of my favorite photos of the set just because of the simplicity, the way that those blues turn teal, and then also how pink the building is with the framing um, just came together really nicely. So after we'd started off at the Pier 66, which is kind of like an observation point, but it's also where the, uh, the cruise ships come in, we kept walking down along the Seattle waterfront looking for, for ways or for images to make. And it is interesting because I do feel like sometimes it's kind of a mix because it feels like the photos are both kind of stylized but also retro at the same time, which is a fun combination to work with. Um, this one here, this next one, that turned out really nicely also, just the way that it does kind of turn into the green. So that one you can definitely see how it was almost the, the blues became green um, and uh, just in a very unique way. Um, I also like this next photo here that's about to show up with the, the way that it framed with the, the pinks and how the sky kind of almost washed out. Just a, a, it came together really, really nicely. So then it was, you know, lunchtime and I have a toddler. So we had to go get ourselves a little bit of food and hang out on the Seattle Pier and split a child's meal of fish and chips because that's the kind of cheapskate I am. It also is fun because we did take our like father-daughter self-portrait here. And you can definitely see I was wearing a green coat and see how it shifts into the purple in that photo there. Uh, then we kept you know shooting around downtown and kind of finishing up the last few photos. And I'm just blown away by both the contrast and the sharpness that this film produces. Like it's they're just such rich images. Um, and it definitely does, you know, my scanning processes help, but I was really impressed by how clean and how crisp these images came out. So I didn't quite finish the role that day, so we kept using it, including uh, the one year anniversary of our self-portrait project, which are these two images. So, you know, we blew out a candle and ate some donuts and stuff. And then I proceeded to kind of just shoot the rest of the role in normal life, which is a little bit of a weird thing to do. I should also note, I accidentally opened up the back of the film and it was like halfway rewound. So a few of these photos in the middle, like somehow an image still came through on them, even though I opened up the, the backing, which is insane. Um, but uh, it also didn't turn out exactly like it was supposed to. That said, I really like this one here, how it's kind of like half cut through there, like a first of the roll kind of a thing, which is pretty impressive. Um, but that said, it was also really cool to see how well the Lomo Chrome Purple maintains skin tones. And you can see it here with these couple of images of Lena, just because like her skin is maybe a little bit pinker than normal and her hair is definitely a little bit pinker than normal, but it still holds up. 
uh, post the cooking making adventure, we went to finish off the roll by going to Vashon Island, which is one of the many islands here in the Puget Sound. And so we hopped in a ferry and went across the water. Um, this was one that I was really excited to be making these photos here just because there is more greens. Like those railings and all of the trim is known for being green. And so I thought that those greens might turn into kind of that purple. Um, and anytime, like I just, I love shooting on ferries. Uh, they're just always so, so, so fun because of like the classic shapes that the windows have and it's so iconically northwesty and so anytime I can get out there and make these kind of photos always feels fun um, and like just the framing is always a blast. Once we got to uh, Vashon, we headed down to the water where there was this lighthouse, which uh, I was really excited to shoot too, just because I felt like something kind of unique and with all the green grass, the reds of the lighthouse and then the blue sky, that felt like something that the colors could shift in a really interesting way. Uh, and so you can see how the reds kind of maintain, the greens become purple and those the kind of the teal stage too and then the blues become teal in the sky and all together like I'm just blown away by how good they look like I mean I kind of expected I'm not that this is like a gimmicky film or anything like that but like it kind of is like it's not a normal film like it's supposed to have these kind of like weird elements and stuff and so I still am just really impressed by how it does do both maintaining the sharpness and the crispness and some of the colors, but also giving you such a new and fun way of looking at things. Then we finished on the way out of the state park. We swung by this little old radio station or radio towers and stuff. And I really do like that image too. I thought the framing was really good and the purples and the grass turned out really great. And it was just a fun little stop that I kind of scoped out. I was like, yes, this is exactly what I want. Um, so I took a second image here, but I really do think that that first one was the way to go. Might have even got my finger in front of the lens there. So whoops. And yeah, that was it last three photos and then we called it a day. And yeah, it's definitely weird to use creative films like this for life documentation just because that's not what it's for. But at the same point, I really do actually love these photos of my family and me, my family memories and stuff just because it felt different and unique and a fun take on a thing I know. So my review is that I'm going to buy more of this. It's awesome and uh, I'm definitely going to keep using it especially to tell my story of my family. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a good one. Mm -hmm.